So you are thinking of coming to the Philippines. In this video I'm going to show you what activities you can do and where, as well as some tips for you in order to have a great holiday. So grab your seats and let's go! Our journey started from Don Sol. There are many ways to get there, but the quickest one is to catch a flight from Manila to Legaspi and then to get a van to Don Sol. Don Sol was a small town of fishermen 20 years ago, but today it's one of the places worldwide where you can snorkel with the biggest fish in the world, the whale shark. Between November and June, whale sharks appear in the Dorsol Bay and stay for 6 to 7 months feeding on plankton coming out of the mouth of the Dorsol River. Interaction with whale sharks in the wild is regulated by local authorities and WWF guidelines are generally observed to protect the sharks. There is no guarantee that you will see the animals, but this is the right way to support their protection. You can also find whale sharks in other areas of the Philippines such as Oslo, however the experience is artificial as the people feed the animals and the animals we were told by locals that they are essentially trapped in a bay. And another activity that you can do is to visit the Mayan Payan hills and on a good day with clear skies you can see the mountain Mayon volcano which is well known for its amazingly symmetric conical shape. You can combine this activity with visiting the Kitindai Falls and underground river of Jovelar. The cave is approximately 150 meters long, decorated with stalactites and stalagmites and you can also see bats. It can be navigated by riding a bamboo raft along the underground river that ends on a small waterfall. Overall, it was a good experience, but I found it a bit overpriced. Our next destination was the Malapascua Island. In order to get there, you have to fly to Cebu, get a taxi to the north bus terminal, then the bus to Maya, and finally the ferry to Malapascua. Alternatively, you can get a van or taxi straight away from the airport to Maya, but it will cost you more. I would suggest you to get an aircon bus as it is a long journey and the difference in the price compared to the non-aircon bus is small. So buses with air conditioning can sometimes be very cold, so if you would like to have a jacket or a jumper would be beneficial. Malapascua became famous in the early 90s as a dive destination due to the presence of the thresher sharks. They can grow up to 6 meters in size and they feed on squid or fish. Today, due to overfishing for their fins and meat, the species is critically endangered. Luckily, a marine protected area has been established in the island as they are the biggest source of income for the locals. Other things you can see when diving are the white reef sharks corals, sea snakes, nudibranchs, clownfish, starfish, seahorses, frogfish and much more. On the north of the island you will find the Lango Beach where you can easily spend a full day enjoying the very fine white sand and blue-green waters. You can either walk there or get a motorbike and it will take you approximately 15 minutes. Island hopping tours are also available but we prioritized on diving. <coughs> Very important tip, get a waterproof jacket for your trip as you might get caught in a tropical rain. It's not always sunny in the Philippines. Next destination, Molbol. To get there you fly to Cebu, get a taxi for the south bus terminal and then a bus or van to Molbol. Molbol is very popular for the vast schools of sardines, the stunning coral ecosystem and swimming along with turtles. Everything is found literally in the shallow waters in front of the coast. However, please remember to avoid stepping on the coral. Especially hard corals take thousands of years to grow and it's a shame to step on them and essentially destroy them. Also, when you see a turtle, don't harass the animal for a selfie. Give them time to get used to your presence, move slowly and gently and you will have an amazing experience, trust me. Plus, you can get a lot of selfies from a relative close distance. And another activity you can do is canyoneering at the Cavasan Falls which lasts for approximately 3 hours. When canyoneering, you will be walking alongside the river and sometimes through it. The most amazing part of canyoneering though is the jumps and especially those from 10 and 12 meters of height.
also a spot close to one of the biggest waterfalls with a rope swing where you can pretend you are the Tarzan. Towards the end of your activity you can swim below the 15 meter waterfall and then have lunch which is included in the price. If you have found this video and tips helpful, please pause it for a second, go in the section below and like and subscribe in order to show me your support and in order to enable me making similar videos in the future. Let's get back to the video. So where were we? Oh yes, Palawan and more specifically El Nido. To get to El Nido you can either fly directly to Leo Airport and then get a tricycle to the town or you can fly to Puerto Princesa like we did and then to get a van to El Nido. Fishing and harvesting birds nests was the main source of income in the past but today El Nido is essentially the gateway for tourists to some of the most beautiful beaches in the world with four island hopping options offered. The island hopping tour lasts for roughly 6 hours and lunch is included. Everything is so organized that you can even find a cold drink in the middle of the sea. <laughs> Overall, island hopping is an amazing experience, however, if we had to do it again, we would consider hiring a private boat where you can visit places that are not so crowded and make the most of your island hopping experience. The Nakpan beach is considered to be the most beautiful beach around El Nido town and you can get there by a motorbike or a tricycle and it takes approximately 40 minutes. The first thing you will probably want to do after the bumpy road experience is just to chill out and relax on this 4 km long beach. A very important thing to know for this beach is that you are advised not to go too far from the shore as there can be some strong currents. On Akban beach you will also find restaurants and bars where you can eat and have a drink. If you want to try a zipline activity where you start from an island and finish on another one then you should definitely visit the Las Cabanas beach which is a 20 minute ride with a tricycle from El Nido. Zipline in Las Cabanas! Yeah! Las Cabanas Beach is an amazing place to visit and one of the best in the Philippines to watch the sunset. The canopy walk and dream catcher activities are in another option you have and it is essentially found in the city so you can walk there. Basically you have a guide and you wear a helmet, a harness and you are attached to a wire as you go up the limestone hills. It is a short climb and not hard at all. You cross swing bridges and climb up rocks, but anyone with moderate fitness can do this. You end up at a viewing area where you get great views down to El Nido laid out below you. Definitely a fun thing to do and the whole experience will last for approximately one and a half hours. Last destination, Port Barton. To get there you can take a van from El Nido and it will take you roughly 4 hours. Port Barton along with Don Sol we talked about earlier are the two places which are still not so developed. It is a laid back fisherman's village hidden amidst tropical jungle and it's for those who want to avoid the crowds and chill plus it is a cheaper version of El Nido as it offers island hopping tours, diving and it's surrounded by beautiful beaches. You can easily spend a day by having three dives and lunch is included. You will definitely see turtles, corals 
and lots of different marine life and if you are lucky you might see blue spotted rays. And another thing you can do is to rent a motorbike for a day and visit the beautiful beaches around the village. The Pamuayan beach is 20 minutes away to the north. It is not so developed in terms of facilities offered, however there aren't too many tourists around. The white beach is the most famous beach in Port Barton and you can get there also by boat if you don't want to rent a motorbike. If you drive there, you should know that the road is really bad and it's a lifetime experience. There are plenty of things to do when you arrive, such as enjoying the crystal clear water, renting a kayak or chill on the hammocks offered for free. A few extra tips for you since you have watched the video until this point. So as soon as you land in the Philippines, I would suggest you to buy a local number. Uh, that's because uh, you will not find Wi-Fi everywhere, so it's better to have uh, some internet connection and try to find uh, any information you would like, wherever you like and whenever you like. For most ATMs have a withdrawal limit of 10,000 pesos and every time they charge you 250 pesos. However, there are some ATMs like the HSBC Bank where they allow you to withdraw more than that and they don't charge you that 250 pesos fee. Overall, we spent two and a half weeks in these amazing places and all I have to say is that Philippines was a very safe place to visit with friendly and happy people. If you found this video and information helpful, please like and subscribe below to support my channel. Also, I would love to hear about your experience in the comments below. I hope that you will enjoy the Philippines as much as I did. It's a beautiful country with lovely people.